How would I describe Zach Van Gerbig? Well, it's not a second skin that Todd really has to step into. He's kind of a mediocre musician, so I think Amy and Dan kind of picked up on my vibe on that and made him a just a garage rock dude playing with uh, his friends and eventually his lady, as uh, Lane turned out to be. Yeah. I could remember getting cast, uh, went to the audition. I had booked another job. I had booked a job on NYPD Blue, and but it was a small, just a one day of work kind of thing. And I didn't know that Gilmore Girls was going to turn into a recurring character. And my agent said, oh, no, you're going to do this Gilmore Girls thing. It's a popular show, and it's going to have legs. Trust us on this. And I said, well, I want to do the NYPD Blue because my parents watch that show. And Gilmore Girls, I didn't know much about it. And I uh, did say I was playing in a um, in this faux German punk band at the time where we spoke half in German and half in English and sang silly songs. And so I think I did a Pixie song in German uh, at the audition or a few, li a few bars of it. And then I got the call the next day. It's like, hey, you need to show up at Warner Brothers uh, the day after tomorrow or whatever. Night, Zach. Night, Lane. Favorite moments playing Zach. I did like the scene where we got to kiss for the first time, and John, who played Brian, was on my shoulders, and there was this really awkward sweet kiss in the apartment. Uh, that was a really nice moment. It also said, ooh, I might not be going away. They may keep writing for me. Another day that was really fun on the set was the first day that I got to meet Sebastian Bach. Can we help you? Yeah, I'm looking for Lane. I'm Lane. Am I late? For? The audition? For? I'm Gil. 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 Gil, no, you're right on time. Come on in. And here comes this huge, I mean, actually, not just size, because he is a big guy, but just presence. He's such a loud dude, and just so gregarious. And I had seen him, I had taken uh, my my high school girlfriend's little brother to see Bon Jovi, and Skid Row had opened up. This was in 1989. And that dude who was swinging his hair around on stage and running all over the place, I had no idea that I would be running lines backstage and like hitting harmonies with him uh, for these songs. and. Well, I think I made uh, lifelong friends uh, just from that bonding experience uh, in the early 2000s. We were all in our late 20s, but playing a little bit younger. And um, we, uh, a lot of long hours on the Gilmore sets. I mean, a lot of long hours, sometimes 16 hour days and stuff. So you get close to people um, and they're still friends and sometimes we get together and play cards um, I'm I'm like again I, I, I'm so blessed for the opportunity to have worked on this show yeah I can remember uh, singing that song that they had written uh, Grantley Phillips the town troubadour had written that what's the big commotion what's the big and then Emily or Mrs. Uh, Kim helps me finish it I said, that's an awesome ending. It's very Dave Davies. Uh, like from the Kinks. Just the, I was thinking more Dave Clark Five. How's this one? Better. Yeah. That is better. Very Ray Davies. I was thinking Dave Clark Five. Now try it again, the whole chorus. What's the big commotion? What's the big commotion? Uh -huh. Caught a head of distortion. She's nothing like that character. Like this stern, uh, domineering, just strong mother. She's like the coolest, most laid back lady. She did a hell of a job bringing that character to life as this stern, just taskmaster, by the book, ritual Korean mother. Yeah. I really liked the Blondie song we did, Hanging on the Telephone. Uh, I got your number, it's the one across the hall. Uh, we did Believe It or Not, and then we did the the monkeys, I'm a believer.
And then there was that kind of nod to the monkeys when Lane was pregnant and we're pushing her in a bed down like through the town. Slow down. Hold it. Hold it. Too fast. Come on, fine. Hey, this is fun. Don't they push a bed through the streets in the opening credits of the monkeys? I'm pretty sure it was a bathtub. Oh, actually it was both. Davies in the bed, Peter's in the bathtub. But I'm proud to say most of the guitar I played on that, uh, just simple rhythm stuff. Um, and it honed my chops a little bit better to learn how to cover other people's songs. So yeah, I was, it was a great job. I loved it. Why do I think Gilmore Girls is so loved now 20 years later? I would have to guess that young people who grew up watching it with their parents, and let's be specific, young girls who grew up watching it with their mom, are now older now and can now relate to motherhood and what their moms might have been feeling at the time. I mean, I think that's a big part of the demographic for the show, and I think that's what's given it legs to keep recirculating on Netflix and on reruns, and um, I'm very proud to have been a part of this show. Let's see, what is Zach and Lane and the boys up to? Zach may be teaching at like one of those school of rock kind of things, and uh, he's got his kids, and he might be a little bit micromanaging their musical careers, and the kids probably don't want to have anything to do with dad's music, and uh, <laughs> so they want to be athletes or scientists or something, but they probably don't have any kind of rock and roll aspirations because they've rebelled against their parents. <laughs> 